Hi everyone, Scott Davenport here. In this on one short clip, I'm going to share with you my five go-to filters for my landscape work. I use a lot of the different filters in on one effects, but there are five that I will go to again and again for my landscape photos. The first filter is dynamic contrast. I'm going to add that to my filter stack. Dynamic contrast is, is just great. We get a nice punch to the photo without being over the top. Now, as I adjust these various sliders for the small objects, medium objects, and large objects, I'm really just watching the foreground for this image. I don't want to add contrast to the background. I like that to be soft. So I will grab a mask and I'll use the masking bug and I'm going to choose the edges shape. And what that will do is give me this oval shape and it will mask the effect away from the edges, right? So I'm removing that contrast from anywhere outside of this oval shape here. And I can adjust the feather. So if we do a before and after on that, we can see the contrast is being added to my foreground and not the background, exactly what I want. Filter number two is the color enhancer. Let's add that to the stack. I'm always doing some type of color work. Now for this scene, uh, there are these traces of oranges and yellows that are reflecting off of some of the some of the clouds that were catching some late light. I'm going to try the fall preset here, or style rather, not preset, style. And that's doing a great job of amplifying these oranges, these yellows. I do want to visit the blues as well. So I'm going to go over to this blue channel. And I think I'm going to shift this a little bit toward like a uh, twilight, just, just a nudge, increase the saturation. So we had a little bit more blues going on and I'll take the brightness down just slightly. And this is really, uh, it's only affecting the blue tones, which is mainly the sky here, a little bit in the ocean, but this last adjustment of it, taking the brightness down, that's going to help the, uh, the darkness of the sky in our minds retreat. It's going to move backwards in the photo and give the scene more depth. Filter number three is a glow filter. Let me add that to the filter stack. Now glows give a nice uh, dreamy type, uh, you know, ethereal feel to the landscapes. But like many of our filters, we don't want to apply them everywhere. So I'll fill, flip through here and just kind of watch. And I'm really watching the sky and the ocean in the background to see what looks good. I don't want to lose all the crispness that we got with the dynamic contrast. I like what Radiance Glow is doing. It's a little strong, but I'll select that to start with and take the opacity all the way down to zero and just start inching it back up and kind of paying attention to what's going on in, in the background. And there looks pretty good. Now, I don't want this effect on the foreground. Right now, if I do before and after, it's happening everywhere. And as you can see, a little bit of softness being reintroduced into this area of the photo, the foreground. Well, just like we did with dynamic contrast, we can use a mask. And since I've already done that work, I'm going to open up that masking tool. I'm going to copy that mask. That puts it up on the clipboard. And I'll go over to my glow filter. I'll paste that mask down. Now, what did that mask just do? It masked things away from the background. Remember, that's what we did with contrast. I want the exact opposite of that. So I'll hit invert. And now I'm protecting this foreground area and the glow is being applied to the background. We see before and after. And from here, I can get my masking tool open again and I can adjust that bug specific for that glow look. In this case, I want to tilt a little bit more and kind of cover more of the rocks and let a little bit of that glow creep into the edges here so I get more glow in that ocean. Now for this corner here, the last step will be grabbing the masking brush. I'll increase the opacity all the way up. You can see that we're in paint out mode. So we're removing glow. We'll make that a little bigger with the bracket keys and I'll just kind of brush that over on the edge there so I'm not adding any glow to that little corner. There we go. Filter number four, all right, strictly speaking, it's not a filter. It's the local adjustments. Open up the local adjustments. These are like our Swiss army knife. We can do a lot of things with local adjustments. And for this scene, I want to add a little more warmth into the foreground and uh, a bit of those clouds that have the orange tones. So let me Double click on exposure, zero that out. Let's pre-stage our filter here, uh, or I should say our adjustment with uh, a little bit of warmth. And my brush has already been selected for me. Let's put the opacity all the way up. 
make the brush nice and big. I'm just going to start to uh, actually I'm going to increase my feather a little bit so I get a softer edge and just start to brush some warmth through the foreground here. Just kind of like that. Looks good. I feel like I, I hit this spot a little bit too much. So I'm going to hit the X key that switches us to paint out. I can just sweep down through there and remove some of that warmth there. We'll go back to paint in. I'm going to reduce the strength of my brush to about a half and just uh, do a little bit of a uh, catch work on these clouds here too, just to add a little bit of warmth to that spot there. So here's before and here's after. Filter number five is a vignette. Go back to the overall settings and I'll add a vignette to the scene. Now the way I like to work with the vignettes is I'll start off with a preset and for this scene I'll just choose strong and that's a little bit too strong, but uh, I'll actually, let me try, try subtle. That actually looks pretty nice. And so from here, I'll actually adjust the opacity and just watching where the, the edges get, get dark. And somewhere around the middle is looking pretty good there. Let me do a before and after on that. Before and after. So that's it. Those are my five filters that I will use again and again and again. Dynamic contrast, color enhancer, glow, local adjustments, and vignette. My name is Scott Davenport, and thanks for watching.